I am very happy to come here and to meet my friends, some old friends, some new friends. There is nothing greater than friendship in this world. It is very difficult to find a true friend. A true friend is one who has no judgment and his love is unconditional. Most of our friends in this world carry judgment and they lay conditions on their friendship. In one sentence they will say, I love you, and if you say, I don't love you, they also say, I hate you. A true friend loves you no matter what. A true friend will love you even if you don't love him. A true friend will love you even if you kill him. This kind of friendship is very rare. Only those human beings only those human beings who have crossed the limits of their own mind can be true friends. So long as we use our mind and thinking process, we cannot be true friends. Because our mind is always judging everything. When I call you my true friends, I believe you are my true friends. I experience unending love from all of you. That is why it's a very great day for me to come and celebrate the most important day of my life, the anniversary of the most important day of my life here in Lithuania in Kaunas with you. On 9th of March 1936, that is exactly 82 years ago, I was initiated and given the teachings by my master, the great master, Baba Savan Singh, whose picture you see here. In 1936, on 9th of March, I was initiated by my master. It, this is 82 years ago. Today I am 91 years ago, 91 years old. I'll be 92 in November. So that is why I can tell you I have some experience of 82 years what it means to be with a master. A perfect master is a true friend. He never judges us. He never says, are you a good man or a bad man, good woman, bad woman, good child, bad child, never judges. He is not interested in our lives and our karma. He comes to pick us up and take us to, his, to our true home. True home. This world is not our true home. 
because we live very temporary here. This physical body has a very limited time here. But our soul, our real life force has immortality. That is why this is not the home of our soul. Nor do we know where our true home is. Because we think our self is our body. We are all the time looking for things outside of our body. We never look inside. But inside there is more than outside. To go inside is not as difficult as we think. But we have made it difficult because we have practiced looking only outside. To look inside ourselves we have to use a technique called meditation. Meditation means to meditate upon something, that is, think about something. Meditation means to meditate upon something which is like thinking about something. We are always thinking about outside things. We are not thinking what is inside. If we close our eyes and think about what is inside, we will find what is inside. When I say focus and think inside, where do we think inside? In this physical body, I am not saying think in your hands or your legs or your feet. I am saying think in your head. Behind these eyes lies another set of eyes. These eyes on a physical body look outside. The inner eyes can look inside. We use those inner eyes sometimes when we imagine things. If we close our eyes and think of something, we can see it. We call it imagination. And because we call it imagination, we say it is not real. Why do we say imagination is not real? Is because we think only outside is real. By meditating inside, by thinking inside, we can find out even imagination can become real. By thinking inside, we can find out what is imagination can also become real. Great discoveries have been made, great inventions have been made by man. They all came from imagination. Imagination is not as unreal as we think. That is why if we imagine we are sitting inside and think of what is happening inside, that would be called meditation. That is not difficult. 
वी हैव ए प्लेस बिहाइंड द आईज विच इज अ वेरी कंफर्टेबल प्लेस टू सेट इन these are two eyes that are looking outside these two eyes are not seeing the same thing if you place your finger near your eyes you can see two fingers one eye is seeing one thing one is another finger if you try to look at the finger then the other people become two yeah go jure se te venakime ar kitakime te bus skirtingi tarsi pirštai that is how they make the 3d movies where they have two different pictures on the screen and they combine them with glasses and we can see three dimension er te yra tai kaip 3d filmai yra gaminami tokio to similarly we have two eyes they see two pictures but they combine and make one uh could you repeat sorry there we have two eyes they are seeing two pictures but we are not seeing two we are seeing one they combine the picture into one pavikslele ir asiungiami yra du skirtingi dviem akim bet mes nematome dviem skirtingo matome vieną tai pavikslele ir asiungiami where do they combine inside ir kur jie susijungia tai viduje if you think deeply you will find they combine in your head in the center of your head like if these two fingers are my eyeballs where these fingers meet like that in the back in the head we are combining the two images and seeing one eye with one eye mm-hmm. er tiesiog tie pavikslėdai du susijungia mūsų jūsų mėginėse į vieną pavikslėdį that place inside the head where we combine the vision which we are seeing outside is called the third eye ir ta vieta kur tai susijungia vadinama trečiai akimi when we are awake we are all operating in consciousness from the third eye when we are awake we we are operating from the third eye our consciousness is working at third eye mūsų samane veikia iš trečios akimis that means we are looking outside at the world but we are looking actually from behind the eyes at from the third eye nors ir žvelgiame į šorinį pasaulį bet mes žvelgiame trečiai akimi that's the important place where we should sit inside for good meditation to find what is inside ir tai būtų ta svarbi vieta kurioje turėtume sėdėti ir medituoti my friends tell me we meditate on a chair outside Mano draugai sako, kad mes medituojame nesėdėdami ant kėdės ir šoreje. Some buy an expensive mat or a carpet and they meditate on that carpet. Kažkas nusiperka brambų kilimėlį ar kilimą ir medituoja ant jo. If you meditate in a chair, you are meditating on the chair. Jeigu medituosite ant kėdės, jūs tiesiog medituosite ant kėdės. Some people have a very special room in their house they say that is our meditation room if you go and meditate in that room you are meditating on that room not on yourself such meditation does not take you inside ir tokios meditacijos jūs neveda į vidų The only meditation that takes you inside is that which is done inside. Ir vienintelė meditacija, kuri veda jūs į vidų, yra ta, kuri daroma viduje. Therefore we have to use three things to meditate inside. Dėl to reikalingi trys dalykai meditavimui viduje. First thing is imagination. Jūsų pirma yra vaizduoti. You should imagine that you are sitting inside your head. Second thing is attention. Where you are imagining you are sitting inside, put your attention there. Third thing is concentration of attention. 
if you imagine you are sitting inside the head and you are attending to what you are doing there and concentrate on that you are doing correct meditation if you do that long enough you will see many new things first you will see things that you are remembering from outside but then new lights and colors will start coming from inside then you will start remembering things which don't even belong to this life new experiences will start just by meditating inside you will hear new sounds inside which are not from outside if you can have these experiences you are on the right track because you are pulling your attention inside this meditation inside will open your doors inside we have nine doors on our body that open outside the two eyes two ears two nostrils the mouth and the two lower apertures on the penis and the rectum these are nine doors opening outside these nine doors are taking our attention outside all the time so long as our attention is going out from these nine doors we cannot sit inside the tenth door that opens to our true home is inside we have to pull our attention from these nine doors and pull it inside to the tenth door when we meditate at the third eye center we are pulling our attention to the tenth door if you stay there long enough you will have a very interesting experience that experience is called dying while living when people die they leave their body when you meditate inside you can also leave your body so that is why the experience can be compared with dying if you have seen people dying and i have seen many you will see they don't die at once in the whole body they die in stages the first the legs the feet and the hand die then legs and arms die i have seen patients terminal patients dying in hospitals saying place my leg there and leg is already there they are not where they are not aware where the leg is that means their leg is dead before they are dead because they are still speaking to us after that the torso begins to die from the from the bottom up 
the apatinė elements dalis pradamėti. They say we are floating in the air, where they are only dead in the legs and the bottom of their body. Ir jie jaučiasi tarsi jau būtų ore. They are still speaking to us. Jie vis dar kalba su mumis. When the death comes higher up, near the heart, they cannot speak. We can see they are trying to speak, but they cannot speak. But their eyes are still blinking and their eyes are showing they want to talk. When they die up to the eyes and the head, they are dead. So there is a process which takes place when we die. And the process is that we die from the extremities first and then we die gradually toward the head, ultimately dying in the head is the ultimate death. Same thing can be done by meditation. Except you won't die. But you will have the same experience. If you imagine you are sitting behind the eyes and you concentrate your attention, you will feel your arms and feet have gone away, you don't know what is there. Then you won't know where the rest of your body is going. Ultimately, you will only be aware of your inner self and not aware of your body. Then you will discover your inner body. The inner body you can see, can touch, can smell, has all the sense perceptions, but it has no matter. There are no atoms or molecules in the inner body. Therefore, it is free from gravity. It can fly. And it can have many experiences which this physical body cannot have. It is more transparent than the physical body. Also, it can read the thoughts of other bodies. Therefore, there are no secrets there. Therefore, to communicate with somebody in that body, we can use telepathy. Telepathy is communication without any verbal communication, but it can take place in any language. When I communicate with my Lithuanian friends, I think in English and they understand in Lithuanian. They send their replies in their head through Lithuanian, I understand it in my language. In the inner body there is automatic translation. We cannot do that with this body. Sometimes some people can do telepathic communication even in physical body. But that is not physical, the inner body is doing that. So these are great examples to show how by little meditation 
you can find you have something more inside than you realize. But that is not the end of the story. You can meditate in the inner body also. You can imagine you are in the head of the inner body. And, concent and concentrate your attention there. You will become unaware even of the inner body. Then you find you have a more inner body than even the inner body, which is different from both physical body and inner body. This physical body is made of matter and can have sense perceptions and can think. This physical body this, this physical body has matter, physical matter and has sense perceptions and can also think. This is all physical activity. The inner body can have sense perceptions and can also think. The more inner body, third inner body can only think. Does not need sense perceptions. So we are really having three bodies. This is called physical body. The inner body is sensory body. Or we can sometimes call astral body. Astral because astral refers to sky. And we have a new sky inside, so we call it astral body. The inner sky is different from this sky, physical sky. Physical sky which we experience as day and night. Physical sky, sky is dark and light. During the day it is light, mm -hmm. during the night it is dark. The inner sky has no day or night. It is always lighted up. But it is a medium kind of light, between twilight, like evening light. Inner light you will see is always that kind of light and no darkness, no bright brightness. But when we go to third body, which we call causal body, causal body, causal. Which has no matter, no sense perceptions, but only thinking. It is also kind the mind. It is also called the mind. The, the mind is not merely a thinking machine. It is also a body. We, we only find out when we meditate first with this body, then the inner sensory body, then we come to our mind and find the mind is also like a body. Right now we are using all three bodies. We think with the inner body or the mind. We have sense perception from the astral body and a physical uh, the appearance here is with the physical body. We are all using all three bodies right now. But we don't know we have three bodies. 
We don't know we have three bodies. We think all this is happening in this physical body. Only when we have experience in which one body disappears, we can know what is happening in the other body. So good meditation can help us to make one body disappear and we know the other bodies are working. The deeper we meditate, the more we can go in the second body and find that even the mind is functioning independently of the two bodies. All this we can experience very easily by doing meditation. Some people don't even do that. They meditate even below the eyes. Some below in the heart center, heart chakra. Some meditate in the throat center. Some meditate in the remaining six centers of energy below the eyes. Many yoga exercises teach us to put attention on the six centers below our eyes. Many yoga exercises. These as centers below us are energy centers. All the energy we have is from the six centers, from the eyes down to the six center below. Energy is different from awareness. We are using energy to survive here. We cannot get higher and higher awareness by energy. We cannot, um, cannot get higher awareness by energy. For higher awareness, you have to go inside the head, not go below. I have met my friends doing this meditation of the lower center for many years. They never got any higher awareness, they got unusual experiences. You cannot get the experience of the inner body or the mind by doing exercises by putting attention on the lower centers of energy. But even those who do energy centers sometimes have out-of-body experience. But that is not the same thing because that body which they create is still attached to this body. That is a temporary exercise in which that body is pulled out and comes back again to the physical body. That kind of meditation can give you those unusual experiences. But cannot give you higher knowledge of your own self. Even knowing your inner body does not show who you are. 
vidinį jūs, jūs neatskleidžia to, kas jūs esate. I have described three bodies that you can find with meditation. Aš apibūdinau tris kūnus, kurios galite surasti, atrasti meditacijos būdu. The physical body. Fizinis kūnas. Inside the astral body. Vidinis astralinis kūnas. The causal body. Causalinis kūnas. All three bodies, who is using them? Who is our self? What is our self? That question, that question still remains. Who are we? That are using the bodies. We sometimes say we are soul. We are life, life, life spirit. We are immortal beings. We are using these three bodies. Can we by meditation find those ourselves? Answer is no. I am giving a frank answer. No meditation can tell us who we are. No meditation can tell us who really we really are. Meditation can tell us about these bodies. Meditation can tell what is our mind. But mind but meditation cannot tell us who is meditating. The self is hidden behind these bodies. The self, our own self, our own real self, is hidden, is hidden behind these bodies. Every meditation we do is done with the mind. Every time we say we want to meditate, the mind is working. You cannot cross the mind with the mind. That is why we have to go beyond meditation to find ourselves. That is the set of the theme for today's talk. To find your real self, meditation will not help. Meditation cannot tell you who is using these three bodies. Now what can we use to go beyond the body? Nothing. Because every time we want to use something, mind comes in. So we cannot, by our effort of any kind, go beyond the mind. But there is a way to cross the mind. If there is some power outside of the mind that can pull us up, if there is any power existing in our soul beyond the mind that can pull us, we are very lucky that the soul has power. It is not thinking power. That is mind. It has the power to love. It can, it can love. Love is the real power of the soul. Only love can pull us beyond the mind. When we experience love from anybody, you notice it is not the mind that is being pulled, 
It is not the senses being pulled, it's not the body being pulled, soul is being pulled by love. That is why when we want to go beyond all the three bodies, we are pulled by love, pure love, true love. Pure love comes from a true friend. So I said in the very beginning, friendship is the most important thing in life. Not, not any friendship. Only true friendship. Where there is no judgment. And the love is unconditional. We when we come across these masters, perfect living masters, what do we get from them? Do they come to teach us meditation? No. We can learn meditation from the books. We can learn meditation from each other. They don't come as teachers. They come as true friends. And they pull us with the love of a true friend. They may become teachers for the sake of our mind. Our mind does not love, does not like love. It likes teaching. Mind wants to be taught. Soul wants to be loved. Our real self wants to be loved. The pure love that comes from a true friend is what takes us beyond the mind. These perfect living masters come with true love. Once they accept us as a friend, their love is always unconditional. They never lay any conditions to, to love us. They have no judgment whatsoever. They will never judge whether we are good or bad or who we are. How do we find them? We sorry we cannot find them. Sorry we cannot find them. But they can find us. They can find us. When do they find us? When we are ready to be found. We are ready to be found by a perfect master when our seeking inside is very strong. When we feel that this is not our world, this is not our home. There is something else which is our home. We want to go to our true home. They appear in our life. They appear, they don't, they are not found, they appear. What brings them to us is our seeking in our soul. When we have tried out the friendship and love of this world, 
and find out it is not real. They appear in our life with true love and they pull us with that love. They pull us not only over here in the physical world, they pull us inside the meditation beyond the mind. That is why the true way to go beyond meditation is to be pulled by the love of a perfect living master. Why do we call them perfect living masters? Perfect because they are above the mind. Only mind creates an imperfection. They don't operate from the mind. So we call them perfect. They are living in physical form. Therefore we call them living masters. Supposing, supposing a master is dead, he cannot be expressing that love in physical form. Some people like to follow dead masters. They cannot meet physically a dead master. So when they think in their head we are being loved by a dead master, they are being loved by their own mind. Because all thinking is mental. They are thinking they are going to be helped by dead masters is only their own mind thinking. If we want to get real help, it has to be a living master living in the same form in which we are living. Perfect living masters, we call them perfect living masters because they are masters in the real sense. They are masters in the real sense. What is the difference between a master and a master in the real sense? I will describe the difference. A person who has had an experience, higher experience of knowledge, come back to us and says, I can teach you how to go to that experience. That is a master. The master remembers his experience and shares with us. That is not a perfect master. A perfect master is one who is having that experience while he is talking to us. A perfect living master does not teach from books. He does not teach from his old experiences. He teaches from the awareness that he is having at all times. He is not telling us what he saw. <coughs> he tells us what he is seeing. This achievement can be done by anyone. But you require to go little higher than even going beyond the mind. 
Bet mums reikia papilti daug aukščiau, netgi to anapus proto dar aukščiau. When you are pulled by a master beyond the mind, you find you are a soul. A soul is consciousness. A soul can create anything out of its consciousness. It can create a mind, it can create a world, it can create a universe. Prota, uh, uh, visata. There are many souls. We are all having souls. But there is one stage even above that. That is totality of all souls into one soul. I call it totality of consciousness. Where we discover there is only one source from where all souls come. A perfect living master has reached that state. Anybody can reach that state. We are all equipped to reach that state. Every human being, no matter where he is born, where he grows up, what culture he follows, what religion he follows, can go into that state. When a perfect living master of that order pulls us with his love, he makes us like himself. We have the same capacity which a perfect living master has. These masters are very rare. Because the seekers of that kind of truth are very rare. Most of us just want to get some worldly things settled with the help of masters. We go to masters, please improve our health. We need a new job, we need more money. Our children have need better education. The child is not behaving properly, please help. The, the girl I loved has left me. The man has cheated on me. These are the things we carry to our masters and masters help is only limited to something we can do here. So many masters can do that. That is why we don't need a perfect living master. Some want to find the truth inside themselves. They do not know what is inside. Therefore, a simple master who has reached the astral stage can be a good master for such a person. Some want to go to their universal mind. Such seekers think the mind is the ultimate thing. Such seekers think that the mind is our ultimate reality. Such seekers think that our mind, that the mind is the ultimate truth. There are masters available to take you to universal mind. 
ir kai kurie meistrai gali mūsų turėtinti prie visatos protą. For those seekers, such masters will appear. Ir tiems ieškotojams atsiras tokie mokytojai. Only those seekers who are seeking the ultimate truth, where they are one, become one with everything, they find a perfect living master. Ir tik tie ieškotojai, kurie ieško galutinės tiesos suras, tik tobulą gyvai mestą. That is why when these perfect living masters come into our life, we cannot recognize them. Ir dėl to, kai šie tobuli gyvieji meistrai atsiranda mūsų gyvenime, mes jų neatpažįstame. They are born like us. Jie gimsta kaip mes. They die like us. Miršta irgi kaip mes. They fall sick like us. Jie susirga kaip mes. They take medicine and go to hospital like us. Vartoja vaistus ir eina į ligoninę kaip mes. They eat food like us. Valgo. They have karma like us. They have destiny like us. No difference. All of us are equally qualified to be perfect living masters. The only difference is how much they know when they are living here. When they have full knowledge of every level of consciousness. When they are living in all the levels at the same time. When sitting as a human being they can talk from the true home. When they share their knowledge from direct knowledge, then those are the real perfect living masters. Depending upon what we seek, we find the right master. Sometimes we don't know what we are seeking. I met many friends who say, we are finding something, but we don't know what it is. They can meet a master who will tell them what you are seeking. It does not mean that they are not seeking more, but at that time they only want to know what they are seeking and a right master comes up that level. Later on they feel, no, we need more. Another master comes at a higher level. So one can have many masters in one's life. Only when we think we need more than what we have got, a new master comes. If we meet a master, we are satisfied what he has given, we don't need any more master. But when we feel we need more than what we have got, another master, higher master appears. So there are many levels of masters and they come into our life according to our need at that time. I will tell you a true story of one of my friends. This gentleman was living in Burma, which is now called Myanmar, and was an engineer by profession. 
Šis vyras gyveno pirmoje, dabar vadinamoje Mienmaro ir buvo inžinierius pagal profesiją. He was very keen to find the true state of the self. Ir jis labai ieškojo tos tikrosios esaties. He met many holy people. Ir susitiko su daugybė šventų žmonių. He met many yogis. Daugybė jogų. But they never satisfied him. Bet nei vienas netrenkino jo. Then he heard that in India, in the city of Madras, is very special Swami, a yogi lives, who can give real knowledge. This man, my friend, was very difficult to spend any money. He did not want to spend money. <coughs> the currency there at that time was a rupee and he would hold a rupee note in his hand and would say, say like a euro, say he's holding a euro, say to spend or not to spend and he would say not to spend, put back in his pocket. <laughs> Because of this nature, he was able to collect 30,000 rupees in his account. When he heard that there is a master in India who can give him real knowledge, he decided to leave his job, collect all his money, and go and see the master in India. The master in India was a very famous yogi. He followed a system which was followed by some earlier yogis. This yogi Swami said, I follow the system which was followed by others which says, give me your body, give me your wealth, give me your mind, I will give you knowledge. Give me, your give me your body, mm -hmm. give me your wealth, give me your mind, I will give you true knowledge. This friend of mine was so keen to get true knowledge, he agreed. He said, my body is yours, my wealth is yours, my mind is yours, give me true knowledge. So the Swami Yogi said, first give me your wealth, how much do you have? He said, I have collected 30,000 rupees. The Swami said, put it in my account, I have to build a temple. Now imagine how keen this man was to get knowledge, who could not spend even one euro, transferred his 30,000 into the account of the yogi. Then the Swami said, now I have to take your body. He said, I will teach you a yoga by which you have to practice breathing alternately from left nostril and right nostril. He said, take one breath from left nostril. Ne next breath from right nostril. Alternate these. 
But don't use your fingers or your hands. Because that will draw your attention outside. It has to be done from inside. It has to be done with the tongue. The tongue has to be turned backwards. He said, for that I have to cut the tendons of your tongue. Cut tendons of your tongue. And he said, because it is a sacrifice, I do it in a very painful way. I'll scrub it every day for 30 days and take your tongue off from the tendons. The Swami said, I got it done also. And he showed his tongue come out like the tongue of a snake. He, he said, now you have to use your tongue inside and from inside you have to control the breathing left and right. This friend of mine went through this torture for one month. Then he did this breathing with the air in the nose. But he did not get what he wanted. Then the Swami said, give your mind to me and I will teach you inside. Then he taught him many mantras, many words to repeat. But this man could not gain what he wanted. He felt dissatisfied. Then later on he came to great master, whose picture you see here. Great master accepted him as a friend and initiated him. And he made great progress through the love of the great master. So one day we were all sitting in the evening with Great Master. I was also there. And this friend of mine tells the Master, Master, if I had known you are the real master, I would not have given that 30,000 to that other man. Great master laughed. And he said, my friend, when you came to me, I transferred those 30,000 into my account. Then Great Master explained that the work you did with that Master was not a loss. You had to go through that stage to come up to me. Therefore, if we have gone through many masters, it does not mean we went to wrong masters. Therefore, when we go through many masters, we are required to go through those masters. And if we are still dissatisfied, we ultimately come to the perfect living master. I am very happy that all of you are seeking the same truth I am seeking. I feel you are like my co-travelers. I cannot but feel that you are my true friends. 
I am glad you found time to come and listen to me. Some of you have asked for personal time. I will come back later in the day, about 3 o'clock, and we can have personal time. So I am very happy. I hope I come again to Kaunas and get a chance to see you again. Thank you very much for your patience and your love.